Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Dungeon Boys. My name is Keith, and this is Tank Media Games. We'll go around the table. Bryce, are you looking at me funny? You're giving me the eyebrow? I'm just trying to remember what episode we're on. 24? Number 24. Oh. Mm. <laughs> oh, you almost got the wrong number? I said 23. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 23 was the last one where we started this big combat encounter. Josh, tell us what your <clears> name is. My name is... You just told me what my name was. Well, tell everybody else. I only told you. I do forget it every now and then. Josh, playing as Arlo. Zenus playing as Grim. And I'm Bright. And there's a sonic boom yeah, outside. Yeah, that was my <laughs> Somebody fired a cannon outside. And That's I'm Bryce it. playing as Jack Law. And you're listening to Dungeon Boys on Tank Media Games. Uh, brought, to is... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> brought to you by Duke's Barbecue. Not by an actual sponsor. <laughs> right. brought to you by We're Duke's the Barbecue. porkiest. <laughs> <laughs> Not an actual sponsor. But Tank Media Games, mainly a YouTube gaming channel. But we've got this podcast, which has become probably my favorite thing we do on the gaming channel. Uh, so thank you for listening. We are a... a hum- well... Also, also, I like Bearded Brothers. I like everything equally, except for the stuff I do by myself. That stuff's not quite as much fun. Um, but anyway, we are glad to be here playing D and D. This long preamble is to notify you that last episode we stopped halfway through combat. We did. Um, also, I'd like to plug: if you're on Twitter, follow us on Twitter at Tank Media Games. Now, uh, go ahead. We dare you. Yeah, we dare you. So. We stopped halfway through combat. I want to go ahead and make a disclaimer. People may not be in the exact same square foot of space they occupied last time. We've done. Our, I've done my very best to try to remember. It's been a full month since we recorded that combat. If it would have been like two weeks, maybe it would have been a little bit easier, but it's been a long time since we've been able to record. I don't like stopping in the middle of the combat, but it was, just, it was necessary based on time constraints. So, hopefully no one has come back to life that was once dead. Um, I don't think anyone has died that was not dead when whenever we left off. So bear with us. The general theme of the battle remains is that there is a large force fighting against your beloved players. I would maintain that thought in your mind. Um, and that's that's the theme we want to get across. Whether a magical an orc mage is still alive or whether a goblin's wolf is still alive is neither here nor there. Are we, our objective is still to destroy them all, right? Your objective is your own. <laughs> you that's, usually, that's usually our objective. It's yeah. not what our objective sets out to be, but it quickly develops. A lot of times you get into situations where yeah. the only way out is to quote-unquote destroy them all. <laughs> yeah. so, we usually start every <laughs> little adventure by saying, well, let's try not to kill anybody. <laughs> well, it's, it's like stealth it RPGs. Like, Absolutely. You try it at first, but it just doesn't work out. But it's, yeah. it's the way I play Skyrim. Is like I always walk into a situation with a bow. I'm crouched. By yeah. the time I get out, I've probably got a couple of swords out, some some spells. It's, like, it's, it's one of those things where I want to be stealthy, but if you don't help me be stealthy... That's a shame for you, <laughs> because now I've got to stand up on my feet and kill everybody. Look how I play every stealth game. I wanted to make it difficult for myself, but now I have meteors of fire orbiting around yeah. my body. Or like uh, While I swing two great swords in each hand. <laughs> like Spider-Man PS4. There's a lot of stealth missions in that game, but none are you know, necessarily, none are completely necessary. It's like, hey, I ought to do this quietly. If somebody sees you, well, that's a shame. I'm going to be kicking everybody in their head now. <laughs> Thank you. But let's right. play D&D. No, I was going to say, thought, you, just, you just wrapped up a uh, full playthrough of Spider-Man, right? Uh, I wrapped up not only, yeah, not only on the channel, you can watch me play all the way through Spider-Man PS4 and all the DLCs. Also, just a little tidbit uh, to show you how uh, worthless this achievement is. It's not worthless. I enjoy doing it. But I have, I have every trophy associated with that game. I have every trophy from the main game, every trophy from every DLC, and every trophy from the new game plus uh, set of trophies. I have 100%ed Spider-Man. Sweet. Ooh. It makes me really happy that I've done that. <coughs> it's it was it's definitely one of one of the best games I've ever played. So, achievement. Let's play D and D. So last time, lots of things happened. Uh, the guys were out in the middle of a field. They were going to deliver a, a criminally bad mayor. <laughs> To the orcs, you're to, bad. Yeah, to the to the orc. Or they're trying. They're trying to find a place to you know get rid of him because he was responsible for this battle between the 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 Farkian people and gnolls in the woods. Uh, but as they were Maybe approaching, I was a, totally okay with just feeding him the black yeah. thing. And, and an orc raiding party, an army raiding party, was coming over the hill towards Fark. 
seemingly on the they were on the lookout for the people who killed Ronald Witherbranch, right? That's that's what was occurring, I believe. Mm-hmm. They <laughs> found the him, <laughs> and they found you all guys, and so b- battle ensued. Black, I think Black Fang was one of the first to to attack. There was a <clears throat> situation. Uh, I know he's first um, in the order. Um, yeah, because him and Argnon, Argnon was like, "Hey, why don't we just give them these guys back here?" That'd yeah, they were. Yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. Black Fang was like, "No," and I overheard Black Fang, and then I was like, "Okay, well, this is bad." Right. And I blew the horn. That was it. That was it. That was it. Because Argnon was the sheriff of Fark, and he was willing to. I'm turn my own horn. Argnon was willing for the for the sake of protecting his town to give you guys up and or he seemed like it and, and black thing was died. not because black thing you know felt that you guys did right by him and so then yeah and now argonon is dead <laughs> he lies dead on the ground are you gonna um, revive him just to kill him no <coughs> you lying to me maybe <laughs> <laughs> um you get back here and so the battle ensued the last Death thing that we heard after the last turn things were looking pretty bleak for jack uh everybody else seems pretty healthy but in the distance, some two gnolls came running out of the woods whenever the horn was blown, um, or on, as a response to the horn. And then also loud thudding from the forest was heard coming that way as well. Um, there's suspicions as to what it may be. Briar. I think it's Briar. <laughs> Definitely uh, Briar. But that's it. That let's. T- I'm 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 stalling because I'm nervous about starting. But let's let's start this combat. I think um, I, I think I wrapped it up last time with the last attack. So wherever the initiative initiative yep, that's, lies, we're going to start initiative back or uh, back at the beginning. Um, if you need a recap on kind of where you stand, let me know. But the next turn is going to be Black Fang's. Uh, Black Fang is a warrior. He is a, a null pack leader, and so he is going to go at the orc directly in front of him, the orc soldier, and he's going to give him a mighty chop. From his great axe, I believe is what he has. Uh, what does he have? It's not a glaive. He has yeah, a great axe. Yeah, yeah I thought he had a great axe. Yeah, he had a great axe. Because I remember we, we were go. telling him to keep your axe sheathed the whole yeah. time. Yep. <clears throat> it's been a month, folks. Give me a break. Also, we're playing on dice trays that uh, Bryce himself created for uh, craft for us. So it was really great. And That's me, yo. I did that. <clears throat> With love and All right, so and cardboard for yours and cardboard. Um, he is going you can't tell to it's cardboard. roll a but you thirteen to know. hit. That is going to do it. So we're going to roll damage. A great axe. Remind me of great damage on a great axe. One d twelve. One d twelve. That's right. One d twelve <laughs> plus strength. So he's going to do seven damage. I guess I shouldn't tell you these numbers. Big truck. Um. So well, I mean, it's not like any of us have memorized their hit points. Right yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, so he sprints, he sprints up. He's within melee range of this orc, and he brings his great axe down into this orc's belly and opens it up. And there's blood there, but the orc remains standing and snarls at him with you know blood on his teeth. Um, he needs to raise. He, uh, <laughs> Black Fang actually gets two attacks, so he's going to roll again against this same orc to see if he can do him in. Um, But he can actually, so he swings one time and connects, and then he pulls the axe out and goes to swing again, but the orc just barely ducks out of the way of the axe as it falls down. Uh, It is now Jack's turn. Jack, you are currently on... The whole battle is taking place on the opposite side of a dead wolf from you. Uh, if you looked up over the wolf, directly to the right of the wolf is a goblin. Mm-hmm. And directly behind the wolf is two uh, giant vultures that were produced by your buddy Arlo. And behind them is an orc mage who I don't believe is looking at you, but he is over there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to booming blade the goblin. Okay. Would a 14 do? Yes, absolutely. Okay, cool. Got to remember what how I do this. All it's right. It's normal attack damage. But we're level five, so you'd add something to it. Yeah. Because the cantrip is now level two. All right. So he takes. I'm waiting. <laughs> Keep on rolling. Keep on rolling. It sounds like you're doing pretty good. <laughs> 
lots of dice rolling. Also, we've negated the loud, loud, loud dice rolling because of the dice trays. So thank Bryce for that. He takes twenty-two damage and oh, two okay. damage if he moves. Oh, so you and you stand up, and as the as that goblin is inching towards you, angry about the death of his wolf, cause, which I believe you slit his throat or something. You killed the wolf. Yeah. Um, the the goblin is <clears throat> inching to you. I'll teach you to hurt my my wolfie. Uh, and as you you just stand up and take your cleaver and just cut his head clean off. Like you just slice his head and it rolls it rolls backwards to the feet of the vultures and one of the vultures bends down and grabs it and swallows it. As the, as the goblin's body stands there stiff and then without a head. Still pointing. Yeah, and then it falls backward or it falls forward towards you and you're standing there with a dead goblin and two vultures in front of you. Right, cool. That are not your enemy. I just imagine like the the head rolls out of the five feet and goes to stop before the vulture, but then the thunder damage kicks yeah. in and just like pushes it to the vulture's throat. Bryce, just... would you like an opportunity attack on the head? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to run to the forest. Okay, uh, that is going to be if we're treating. It may not be the actual. It is still the north. You're running north. The whole battle is taking place kind of you know south west. So yeah, if you're you're running into the woods away from the battle, well, it's like the tree line's like right along the road. Yeah, that you're we're very fighting, close right? to the tree line. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I can make it in my. Yes, you okay. can make it into the tree line from there. Sweet. Sweet. Then I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna use my bonus action to hide in there. Perfect. Roll stealth. I'm pretty sure I got it. Um. If it's anything like above a fifteen, you did. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Um, I think even less than that would have done it. So you are hidden. So Jack, injured, bleeding. I can't remember the attacks you took, but you're probably bleeding. You're you're not looking very good. I imagine you know hot breath can be seen coming out of your mask as you like stand there after you sliced uh, the goblin's head off with your last little bit of energy and you know spread it into the woods, adjusting your hat. I'm, I'm not doing well. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Jack so is not gone. So much sprinting. <laughs> Jack is gone and <clears throat> has concealed himself in the woods. Um, next on the turn order would have been that goblin, but he did. The goblin with the wolf is going to sprint uh, at... Hmm... I can take him. <laughs> no, the goblin with the wolf is actually... The mayor's body was dropped, and the mayor is like... Because he's been tied up. And so the goblin uh, with the wolf is going to go up to the mayor and drag him away. Um, I'm going to grab the mayor and drag him backwards. Save him. <laughs> I wanted to kill him. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about the mayor. Like, Do I have warm, fuzzy feelings? Or? No. I doubt it's warm fuzzies. I seriously doubt um, it. So that's covered the, up a child murder. That's oh, yeah. what the goblin is going to do. The third orc mage, but orc I mean, mage number you know. three, uh, he is going to step forward. Um, and again, he is going to cast... No, I, I don't know if he cast fire shield on himself yet, so I think he is going to cast fire shield to protect himself from any projectiles as he inches closer to Black Fang. Ooh. Also, Black Fang is currently getting surrounded. So he's going to cast Fire Shield on himself. Uh, thin and wispy flames wreathe uh, your body for the duration, shedding bright light in a 10-foot radius. So the, the Orc Mage, begin, they start at his hands, and fire begins to consume him um, as he walks forward, him in his robes. Um, next, it would be Grim's turn. Hey, man. Grim, ahead of... <clears throat> before you are, a, are a pretty much a horizontal line of six healthy orcs and uh, the one on the far left is getting bit, bitten by uh, Arlo right now. Um, where is Argnon in relation to me? Directly in front of you but separating, you are separated by you know, two orcs stand before you. Two orcs? Yeah. Um, I mean those, if you were to go through them, I'm just trying to explain, if you were to go through them you would pass through two orcs worth of space. I got you man. Um, they're still they frightened of me, frightened. right? Yeah, because yeah. this is uh, this is uh, they'd be unfrightened at the end of this turn. I believe so. So yeah, they're still <laughs> frightened of you. Let me see what the rules on the frightened be. They can't move towards toward you. I don't even I don't know if they can attack you. Um, a frightened creature has disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls by the source of its fear is within the line of sight. The creature can't willingly move closer to the source of its fear. Okay. But it so, could attack you if you move closer. But it has disadvantage gotcha. as long as yep. they can see me. I was just trying um, to based on you know. Interpretation. Yeah, because I didn't. Yeah. Um, 
All right, yeah, I got some time. I'm going <clears> to <throat> go ahead and just <clears throat> step up to those two, mm-hmm. and I'm going to punch the one on the right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like just walk up and go straight for the chest. So let me see what I can do here about this. Um, will a 15 do to hit him? Yes, it will. Awesome. What is this? This thing? is, you're going to the one on the left? The right. Right, sorry. Uh, okay, so here we go. Um, 6, 10, 15, 16, 16. Fifteen damage. You punch him directly in his chest with the necrotic stuff. Mm. You well, tell me where you'd like to punch him. How, um, you straight, kill, straight sternum. I'm trying like okay. I'm trying to break it. How about this? I'll tell. I wanted to enact a new thing. I usually get to decide on the, what it looks like when people die. Um, I'm going to tell you that you killed this orc in okay. one punch. How do you want to kill him? Is he wearing like armor? Yeah. Okay. So um, I guess I guess yeah, trying to break his sternum. Just like a, just okay. going down, kind of duck yeah. a little bit and okay. straight. Yeah. So he's kind of afraid. So he puts his arms up, trying to, to try to block or whatever. But your necrotic fist just passes it as it passes by an arm. Some of the flesh on the underside of his arm burns away, and you can see the the bone on the underside. And then you punch him in his sternum, uh, and it, your fist stops for a brief second. But then the necrotic stuff just pushes through, and you ent- and you can feel like pressing through his heart, and he just. Slides off your fist dead, and then nice. the or- the other orcs around go. <gasps> um, so that orc is dead. Cool. I'm gonna um, now punch the orc. You have two attacks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Oh, yeah, Did you, you always have two attacks? Um, level five. Yeah. Huh. I didn't remember that. <laughs> sure. Um, that is a nine. That's probably not gonna do mm-hmm. it. So the orc on the left, you punch. But after after the fear of punch, what happened to the one on his on his left, he just like kind of he just did enough to cover himself that your your fist slipped off and didn't quite connect. Uh, let's not forget <coughs> about bones. Bones. Oh, <laughs> it, yeah. well, I'm just gonna say bones is with you because I have no idea where he was. He was behind me. No, he was actually in front to the left. He was firing oh, you? his uh, he was firing his bow and arrow. Um, there's a guy I work with he walks around every morning he never talks to me because I'm not a pretty woman (laughs) but he walks to all the ladies offices and whenever he laughs it sounds like that like Dudley from Snidely Whiplash the dog isn't that his name yeah (laughs) (laughs) it is so it is so it it just says nothing he comes to the uh, doesn't say anything of any substance. None of it's funny, but he cracks himself up. Like, hey, you guys, last night I had Taco Bell. <laughs> oh no, I hurt myself. All right, Zenith, you good? I was um, trying to fill some time. No, yeah, thank you. I I looked up the skeleton thing. Um, he's going to attack with his short bow, a mm-hmm. nineteen to hit. Yeah, which one, same one you just shot at? Um, Are you punch cap? Yeah, we'll 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 attack this guy. Okay. So he he's like. He's like in the space behind me, just like shooting as I'm moving forward. So nice. um, he does six damage to that dude. Six damage to number that one. Gotcha. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so uh, as that guy kind of is able to block your punch, he's not able to see Bones firing, and Bones fires an arrow that passes right through his armor into his ribs. Just as I as I miss, or he blocks the punch. Bones. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's like that Assassin's Creed trailer where the one assassin's walking through and then like you know people just are dying all around him because of the teammates. Okay. I love an Assassin's Creed trailer. The games have <laughs> fallen off for me, but the trailers are good. And then um, that's the I'm going to use the rest of my movement speed to get over Arnon's body. Okay. So I guess all that's right. opportunity attack on from that orc. Uh yeah, he will try to take an opportunity <clears throat> attack. He'll try to you know quell his fear. Is yeah, bones is bones problem. coming with you? Yeah, he's falling. Do you know how far you could throw a dagger? Uh, 20 or 60. Okay. 20 feet with um, modifiers, 60 feet with a disadvantage, I think. Let me check. All right, with disadvantage, the orc takes his, his great axe that he is wielding as well, uh, and he tries to swing it at you, but his yeah, fear, 20, he, he's shaky with fear, and he just can't hit you. Um, and it, he it's, it's a miss. It's a He rolled a three. Nothing he oh, can yeah, add he to that. It's nothing to hit you. 
Um, he misses, uh, but that's all. And he can't attack Bones. He was going to, because he only one opportunity attack per round. <clears throat> May I just say, I'm so giddy to be back playing Dungeon Boys with you guys. I yeah. just, every every word I say is full of joy. I was it's, telling it's you last night. It's like, Jack, you died. I so was before <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> we didn't mention it. Today is Bryce's birthday. Oh, my God. Oh, God, yeah. Happy hey. birthday, Bryce. Happy, Happy birthday, Tony. Happy birthday, me. The big two... 21. 21? Yeah. We should be we should be just poop face drunk. Yep. During this recording. <laughs> it's, on, it's only 7 a.m. I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> I got this one, guys. Leave it alone. If you listen to this on iTunes, be sure to listen to half speed if you would like the effect of us all being drunk for the recording. Yeah. On um, 23, right? That's the one we listen to, Josh? 22. Uh, episode 22, 22. where um, Jack has taken the, the wagon over to the uh, wagon shop. Wagon <laughs> shop is actually a particularly good uh, good yeah. choice there. It's, it's all good in slow mo. Uh, any podcast is good in slow mo. <laughs> uh, so that orc misses, and uh, Grim, does that end your turn? <clears throat> yeah. End the turn of bones. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so now it is the orcs that are before Black Fang. They are in combat with Black Fang. They are in melee with him. Um, one orc is going to number. One orc is going to move to get between Black Fang and the orc mage. They're going to try to protect their master, but they're also going to swing uh, at Black Fang. Um, you for your hiding. What was your roll for? Oh, hiding? Uh, nineteen plus eight. Okay, yeah. No. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna. Our our house rule is that I give I give ties to we. The attacker. Do, we're still doing the attacker? Okay, yeah, yeah I just want to make sure. Um, so, yeah, he's going <clears> to <throat> succeed in this hit then. Um, <clears throat> no, he's not. That's not. That, that's math doesn't work. Sorry. <laughs> mm. Are there actual rules for that? I have no idea. Um, I think it's up to the discretion of you know the, the, the table. I feel like some, well, there's a couple that I listen to that they give any ties to the player. Um, but I think the attacker is a little bit more unbiased. Mm. Like, if, if you tell me. You need a hundred dollars to pass, and I have exactly a hundred dollars. I don't know. That make that makes sense that I would get to pass. Yeah. So um, you're saying we all get a hundred dollars? No. Oh, you get zero dollars. It's worth unless a shot. unless everybody hops on patreoncom slash Media Network, <laughs> uh, then I can pay you. We still need those two quarters every month to patch yeah. the roof. Yeah, we do. We need a lot. Of, well, we have a leakage outside from the water line, so we could use some help there. A really um, big quarter. So he goes. He steps in front of Black Fang between the mage and Black Fang, and he goes to swing his axe, but Black Fang takes his axe and blocks the hit and, and is able to absorb that. Um, the other one is going to step closer to back Black Fang as well and try to swing his axe at him. This one is going to hit, which is bad news for Black Fang. Um... Oh, it's real bad news for Black Fang. Um, so he is able to block. <clears throat> he is able to block the one hit from the one orc, but the other soldier comes in and grabs uh, during the block, comes from underneath and just buries his axe in Black Fang's right leg. Blood shoots out of his leg, it begins to trickle down as the orc removes the axe. And Black Fang says, "No, I will get you." This is his favorite leg. <laughs> um, bear with me as well. I've had a bit of a you know cold situation, so my voice is maybe a little bit off. After this battle, I should have some more tame voices. <laughs> mm. um, so that is going to be that. Or Black turn. Fang, would you like to join our party? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, orc number four is going to attack you, Arlo, in wolf form. Cool. Uh, yep, he is going is to try to swing at you with his great that, axe. That was in the line of orcs that were coming <laughs> just towards Grim and me. Yeah. Okay. But he had disadvantage because of the fear. Ooh. Nope, he didn't because of uh, that. The, the turn is over, so he's no longer afraid of of Grim. Doesn't matter because he rolled a three on his first one. He's not going to hit you. Sweet. Um, okay. Unless your armor class is eight. Uh, no, he's good. Okay. So he swings. With. He swings his axe, but he swings too high, and you're able to duck your wolf body underneath it. Nice. Um, it's now, I gotta go through all these turns. Uh, Orc 5 is also gonna swing at you. Bring it. I can take it. Yes, you can. A 4, not gonna do it. 9. That's not gonna do it. Um, Orc number 6 is gonna move to Grim. Um, or Orc number 6 is gonna turn around. He's, he's still got a little bit of fear in him. But he's going to try to toss a javelin at Grim rather than to step toward him mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, 
I can actually get up in there with him. While you're rolling, I just want to say the knocking a creature out thing, I don't think we actually looked up the rules for that. We didn't. But we got it spot on. Yeah. You, can, you choose if you want to knock him out or not, but you have to get him down to zero HP. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Which you did <laughs> with that one punch on the mirror. Um, 11 Will not plus... Do. No, I haven't added. I'm sorry. It's a 16. <laughs> well, that might do. Will that hit your AC? It will, yeah. Okay. Uh, so the javelin just grazed it <laughs> straight to the throat. So <laughs> yeah, crazy. six damage from the javelin. All right, man. So you're standing there over Argonon's body. This javelin comes in and, and enters in your back left leg. Your just your left leg. Well, <laughs> not the back left one. <laughs> what? We you technically don't take like damage. You don't get hit until you're down to half HP. Because it's like fatigue and stuff is the the first half. Okay. That's, I mean, that's how they. Gotcha. That's how it's said. I mean, you can do whatever you want. Gotcha. Yeah, I've never, I've never heard of that. I think we'll just go with hits. Just it's yeah. more visually appealing to me. You guys are just spongy. You can take some damage. Um. Hey, I've been working out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, damage spongy. Uh, Orc number seven <laughs> is going to step behind you, Grim, and try to attack you with his axe. Okay. Eight thirteen. No. Okay. So he's gonna step to you and miss. You're able to you're able to turn around and block and like swat his axe away as it comes down. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, number eight. I just is give also, him a slap on the nose. Another one is gonna attack you, Grim. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I I like... Nope. Never mind. He's dead. You killed him. <laughs> sorry. Number nine is also gonna toss a javelin. Okay. Uh, will a fourteen hit? No. Okay. So his javelin passes between you and bones. <laughs> It lands at right behind Black Thing. Um, <clears throat> that ends the orc's turn. Arlo, it is finally your turn. Woo! Um, visualize for me here real quick. It's a long battle. I'm yep. kind of still at the end of that okay. line of orcs. From your eyes, okay. I'll tell you what you see. Before you, you see an orc soldier Ooh. that you've just bit. All right. We'll say in the crotch. I don't remember where you bit him. All right. I was going for the midsection. Two, okay, in the midsection. In the to your right and kind of... Crotch. That right in front of you is that orc, but to his right there's a line of orcs. All know, right. That are kind of that most of them. <clears throat> one the one directly to your right is facing you, the other four is facing Grim. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, you see an orc mage. You see Black Fang. Yep. You see all that stuff happening mm-hmm. behind you. But the most present threat to you, and then way behind that are your vultures uh, and the goblin dead body, and where Jack's burning into the woods. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, is anything near my vultures? Uh, they are within, if they wanted to move, like fly or whatever, to try to attack that orc mage, they are certainly within distance of him. Okay. But yeah, they got 60 feet range. Oh, yeah, they're definitely within range. Also, I'm playing fast and loose with numbers and, 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 uh, distance. And Shoot this from the hip. Now. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Um, I'm going to send one of them over towards where Black Fang is at. Okay. And um, there's, that's where the mage is, like, attacking him, right? Um, he just took a hit from a dude with a, with a, Axe on the leg or something. Yeah, so Black Fang yeah. currently, if he is looking forward, directly to his left is an orc that's trying to attack him. Directly uh, up and right is an orc trying to attack him. And then up and left is uh, an orc mage, right. which is behind the one orc trying to attack him. All right, I'll see if I can go for the orc that attacked him. I'll show you my paper. So, vultures, orc mage, orc, Black Fang. My mind is blown. Okay, so you can see what... Where they're at. All right. So, so one, I will, I will send one vulture to the uh, one that just took a swing at him and actually connected. Okay. Um, I don't know what orc number that is, but yeah, let's try it. Okay, um, you're gonna send that one to him. Gotcha. I'm gonna send one that way. Um, it's got a multi attack on the vultures, yeah. uh, so it's a beak and a talon attack. Beak is six. That's not gonna hit. Yeah. Talon is crit. That will hit if it's a crit. We success. Yes, it is. So that is a. We got a 2d6 plus a 2. So am I rolling 2d6 and then doubling that? Or am no, I. 2D, just... uh, yeah, 2d6 plus 2, and then you mm. roll 2 more d6. Yeah. Okay, alright. So we got a 3, this one a 2, and then two. plus 2, so yeah, 5, so 2 more. Are you saying it's good? Wait, five. so you said 3, 2 plus 2, that's yeah. 7. Hmm? Three, two. Two. Yeah, so yeah. 7 plus another 5, so yeah. we're at 12. Mm-hmm. And four, so sixteen. 
Oh, heck yeah. All what? right, Josh, your vulture does Not enough damage to kill this orc soldier. Sweet. In one fell swoop. I like it. Well, uh, two, but the one. Right. Missed. Well, yeah, he comes in and he tries with the beak, uh, but he is able to like use his big wings to slow down and take his, uh, his inertia from his head to his talons. And he pushes them forward into the chest of the orc, and you hear you hear the crunch of the or the the bending of the steel of his armor and stuff as that you can see the talons enter into his chest. Nice. And the, as he begin as he oh, lets out a grunt, the talons of the the vulture come out and stuck to his talons are the two lungs of, <laughs> of the orc, and they slide off onto his body as he falls backwards. Nice. Black Fang says. Thank you, bird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's one vulture. The yeah, next God, one. these these vultures are clutch. Hey, What's yeah, most like impressive is that Orc was able to grunt with no lungs. <laughs> <laughs> that was the lungs He's outside. Got a no, that's, that's as the the vulture takes him out. It actually squeezes him, forces <laughs> them <laughs> out. Man, he was involved. I'll give you this one last gift. <laughs> 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 You may so the, grunt in your death. The, the, you may. I will allow it. Uh, I'm going to send the second vulture over towards like the middle of that, that line of, yeah. of orcs. Um, so that's kind of between where me and Grim are at, right? Um, yeah, so out of these there's six orcs in the line, where would you like them? Yeah, I'll just go for, for center mass. I'll go for okay. the middle of them. So okay. what's that, so six gonna, or seven? Yeah, you're going to go land in there. Okay. Um, I'll tell you which one looks worse if you like. Eh, it don't matter. Um, 17 to hit on the beak. Um, we'll say you flew to number 6 then. Number 6. Um, he's the closest one to you. That's probably right at the edge of your range. 17 um, on the beak. Yeah, that'll hit. Okay. So roll damage on the beak. That's, so 2d4 plus 2. Uh, that's a 3. Okay. That's a 1. So 4 plus 2, 6. Okay. And then he's going to follow up with the talent attack. Okay. Another crit. Dang, nicely done on the talent. Woo! All right, so... How did we do this last time? It was a 2d6 plus So essentially 4d6 plus right. 2. You just rolled double the dice. Right. So 4 and 6. So that's 10 plus 2. Uh, yeah, you don't that's, need to keep rolling. Yeah, okay. Another another vulture kill. These vultures Crush. are are crazy, crazy successful uh, in I combat. Like bird. I'm <laughs> very impressed with the vultures. So the vultures, the, the full scene of this is the vultures have now killed everything within their line of sight. Over there by where Jack was, they turn around, they fly. You want like I think picturing like low to the ground, just like a missile. Oh yeah, at wherever they're headed. Cruising one of them heads over and, and, and just jams talons into one orc, kills him. The <laughs> other one flies to another <laughs> orc, bites a piece of his head off with his beak, just and then bit, jams man. the talons into his chest and just drives him into the ground with all of his weight. And the orc holding on to his axe. Lift for a moment and then <laughs> drops it and dies. That's the nice. one by Grim. Uh, one of them is right behind you. Is happening, or you know, kind of back into the left. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> that was orc number six. Yes, sir. In the line. Yep. Is the vulture within like five feet of me? Uh, it is not within five feet of you. No. All right. Okay. So I still, I'm still the dire wolf as Arlo, and you can. That's, as a druid, if you're a wolf, you can create your own allies to give yourself advantage. Yes, I can. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> well, as a druid, you can use anything that has concentration. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just, it. I'm just so. thinking as, like, I, I'm a wolf. I need allies to get advantage on this. I'll yeah. make a vulture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, <laughs> <laughs> that number number four is the one that I took. The one the right in front of you, yes, yeah. sir. I'm just going to go for another bike. Okay. Um... Oh, automatic miss. Okay, a crit fail. Yeah, that's a one. Oh, uh, no good. So yeah. yeah, you go to you're you. I'm okay with that though. That was a lot of damage on that. Yeah, arrow. in the process of you biting at the at the this orc, you your eye is caught by the vulture killing the other thing, and you just can't quite focus because it's so cool. Looking. It was majestic. Yeah, my vultures are so cool. Now watch this. <laughs> 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 Nothing. Fail. Don't watch okay. too close. Now you missed it. So that ends Arlo's turns. Turn. Right. Uh, the Knolls. Just for everybody's were, reference, Arlo looks very satisfied at this point. Yeah. It was a miss, a, but... A very satisfied wolf. It was a so the Knolls are going to dash. They are not within combat range, or within melee range yet. They are going to dash as close to the uh, combat as possible, and they're going to try to get to their, their homie Black Fang. Um, 
And so that's going to end their turn. All they can do is dash. Um, but what you see in the tree line or what you hear now is you hear the trees folding over a little as, as you can see one large set of branches uh, coming out of the top of the tree line pushing towards you very much int style from the Lord of the Rings. Ooh. A giant treant emerges from the forest. I thought it'd be John Q Godzilla noise. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it doesn't just sound like that. on the back, <laughs> just making that noise. No. <laughs> no, but I do need to tell you one thing: is that the tree is on its way, and it makes you it notice a, it about is where two the, tons heavier than it should be. <laughs> it's about where um and struggling to breathe. <laughs> God, I'm trying to have a moment here. I'm trying to give you. I'm trying to. I'm trying to do a little fan service. We, <laughs> we we have our own moment. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you guys are. You see the treant burst through the forest, arms swinging, coming towards you. Uh, Briar can be seen walking out of the tree line behind it, and he kind of stops at the tree line just to you got kind of setting himself up to watch. I honestly thought you were gonna say waddling. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm Briar's trying. fat, guys. Hey, <laughs> hey, audience. Did you know? Did you know that Briar's fat? If he was an inch taller, he'd be round. He's so fat. Um, anyway, on the shoulder of the treant is none other than your companion bird, who is who is crossbow. Yeah, yeah, who, yeah. Who, yeah, who has his crossbow? Like pumping fists. Was, if Burb dies, <laughs> we riot. Uh, yeah, pu- just pumping his fist with his crossbow that Jack gave him, making his way to Downtown. the battle, uh, and you can hear him say. Bring tree! <laughs> and that is the end of the treant's turn with Burb. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I don't think he can do anything else. The you appearance know, of this large tree no, fellow. No, he definitely can. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Excuse me. That's not what the end of the treant's turn. The treant bends <laughs> down because there are several boulders in this field uh, that, <laughs> that you guys are fighting in. The treant at the edge of his movement speed uh, he uh, bends down and grabs a giant boulder. Oh dear God! Big bad news boulder, and he picks it up, and he and you can see that Burb is like pointing <laughs> on his shoulder at where the, the rock should go. Lined up the shot, <laughs> and the the tree hurls this rock. Can I, as a reaction, crouch Instantly down and him. like like kind of cover Arnon a little bit. <laughs> I don't think you can. <laughs> Is it a free action to uh, drag an unconscious body out of the way yeah. of a giant boulder? <laughs> in, the, uh, in the monster manual, the attack underneath the thing, uh, the, the, the thing I'm using is called rock. <laughs> <laughs> Could rock that. Oh, well. Jack's eyebrows have climbed up onto the brim of his hat and are trying to escape. <laughs> They've well, luckily enough, the this was just enough to hit the orc mage. Boom! He aimed for the the fi- the biggest, brightest target, which is the fiery orc mage in the back of the pack. Um, oh the yeah, I forgot they were surrounded. The hurtles fire. through the fire sky, um, doing four d ten plus six bludgeoning damage. The treant is a big no, boy. It's those, those Mayan or Aztec like whistling stones or something. <laughs> Man, I love this tree. Dude. I was gonna say, like, if he completely whiffed, can we just have it sail yeah. overhead and like it lands somewhere later in the campaign? <laughs> oh he boy, rolled, he rolled a nat twenty to attack this guy. <laughs> it's gonna be a while. So he does a b- um, lots of damage, but I need to see it's something. Just like, it's like an anime whenever like they throw something or, or you whenever see the sonic boom. Yeah. <laughs> We all get knocked out. Alright, yeah, so the fire shield can do nothing for a giant boulder hurtling through the sky. You should just check that. <laughs> I just want to make sure I just wanna make sure that it couldn't I just wanna make sure it didn't like negate any sort of melee damage coming Got you. Um <clears throat> so and <laughs> the orc <laughs> boot fire. <laughs> Sorry. Press, press just mind back slapping me for that joke. It was necessary. It was Sorry. necessary. Okay, so this rock comes hurtling through, and the orc mage 
Um, he tries his best to get out of the way, but he just can't do it. And the rock doesn't collide with him head on, crushing him. But it takes he takes most of the force. It hits him in the like in the the left half. It spins him around, and he falls and gets knocked on the ground. And you can hear the like his fire shield now poof, gone. It's it's poofed away, and you can hear him going trying to breathe. Um, but he is prone on the ground. Uh, Covered in boulder. <laughs> yeah, and the boulder hits boulder. the ground, and like you see in the movies, or like uh, picture like uh, Chronicles of Narnia, maybe or any movie where they throw rocks and like hits the dirt and like slides through the dirt and uh, creates a little crater, and the rock just kind of continue, continues rolling. Shield go, rolling, pants rolling, rolling. <laughs> Uh, so that will end the treant's turn, just the and you can you can play. hear faintly um, <clears throat> say. Uh, you can hear birds faintly like patting the tree and saying, "Good job, friend." <laughs> um, How does the tree feel about all this? Can the tree obviously speak? not too good? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think so. Understands the birds from the mobile home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. His alignment is chaotic. Treehouse. Yeah, because yeah, he's a bird too. Uh, his uh, the uh, tree its alignment is chaotic. Good. <laughs> so, hey, we're brothers. Yeah. Uh, so. Back to the top of the order with Black Fang. Golly, this combat, dude. Oops. 40 minutes. <laughs> For a turn, mind you. Uh, Black Worth Fang. Work. Wait, I don't go after Arlo? No, you go after Black Fang. Oh, okay. Uh, Black Fang, now that that one orc has been killed by the, uh, uh, the vulture, he turns his attention to the one that just tried to attack him between him and the orc mage, and he is going to try to attack. He is going to hit... Uh, with that attack and with his great axe, he's going to go chopping, whacking and smacking and clacking. That Black fan, orc. what you doing? I'm uh, going chopping. Uh, chopping I mean. I got 20 axes in my pocket. 20 axes in my pocket. Um, you think I would only bring one axe? <laughs> Sorry, so melee attacks. Do you add proficiency and your strength modifier? Yeah, dude. Not to the damage, but just to the attack roll. Oh, right, yeah. No, so, yeah. you add no. you you add proficiency and strength to the attack roll. You add strength to the damage roll. Yeah. Strength to the damage roll, right. Unless it's a dexterity. Don't know why I forgot that, but I did for just a brief dexterity. moment. So he he swings at that orc, and it is attack. quite enough to slice. He, he, he <laughs> frustrated with how things are going, he goes, Enough! And he slams the uh, axe down in, into the shoulder of the orc, splitting him almost to his belly button. And he pulls it out, and the orc splits open and falls to the ground dead. He then moves to the orc mage, who lies on the ground after get, just getting hit by a boulder. Uh, and he's not going to say, I'm going to rock your world, but I wish he would. Uh, <laughs> he stands over him. He's prone. He gets an advantage on this melee, on this melee attack, but he does not need it. Uh, this orc is gonna be dead, <laughs> most likely. Yep. <laughs> this, so he, he chops at him angrily. And he passes. Black Fang chops through this orc. Split the one orc splits him open, blood and guts everywhere. He, as he pulls his axe out, he kicks the orc's body off of it. It falls. He steps over it. The other orc that reaches its hand up to put between he and the uh, and Black Fang, he goes. <gasps> Trying to breathe, Black Fang just buries his great axe in this orc's, in the orc mage's head. He is also dead. Um, Somebody else we allowed to gasp. Uh, um, he turns around and looks at all of you, and he sees the orcs coming, and you can see like his his knollish hyena smile go up, and he says, "We have turned the tides. I killed them all." Uh, and that will be the end of his turn, Jack. Hey. <laughs> uh, is anybody left? Mm. Oh, yeah. There are six orcs, no, four orcs left, and a goblin who has the mayor. Okay. And a wolf. I'm going to limp out of the forest <laughs> 15 feet, Okay. and I'm going to throw my dagger at the closest <laughs> one. All right, you're going to be throwing a dagger at the orc, or do you want... Yeah, the orc that's attacking Arlo. It's kind of a good distance, but yeah, it's a good uh, quarter mile. Fifteen. Um, yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> will it? Yeah, that'll hit. All right. It will. Sorry, right. I, was, I was making sure I remembered the right. I have a lot of NPCs and things I'm messing with right now. All right. So, can I attach <clears throat> booming blade to a thrown weapon? 
No, because you have to make a melee attack. Yeah. I mean, it's technically a melee attack. It's weapon. a ranged attack, my man. You it's, throw it at dog. It's, it's your story. It's, if I stabbed him with the dagger, it the would be The magic is in you, not the weapon, sir. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Always remember the magic is in you. The magical okay, hands of Jack the Butcher. It's me, 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 the whole. What are you doing? Huh? Daggers are D6s, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. But you. They're not D4s? What? Right. Pretty sure they're D4s. Yeah, it is a D4. Yeah, pretty sure daggers are deep. I wonder if Jack, in his profession as a butcher, would use booming blade at the so shop to tenderize the meat. <laughs> yeah. just he just chops it and pushes it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's how no. he gets it Cube to the people. Steak. Yeah, like he gets it almost down and then just pushes it, and the force propels it a bit more. <laughs> would you get sneak attack with this? Yeah, ranged weapons do work with sneak attack. Nice. Cool. And I am hidden, yeah. so I got advantage. Nice. Um, From the tree line of blade flies. Oh, I should probably check and see if I got it. No, I didn't get a twenty. Um, so thirteen damage. What did you roll? It. You already told me what you rolled. It thirteen damage. God, on a dagger. Good lord, rogue. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I was thinking about it earlier. They are pretty overpowered at early levels. Oh, wow. oh but after like level six or seven or so it kind of balances out and they honestly are underpowered yeah. after a little while i've heard a lot about rogues and how they can be overpowered i've seen a lot of memes as well where it's like but it's just in the beginning yeah because like whenever he gets to where he can cast a spell that does well you already can do inflict wounds right yes yeah, level one which is if you have a level three spell slot you can add two d10 to that so that's five d10 damage in one spell attack mm-hmm that increases the work there is for me. Um, but, yeah. Those are pretty kind of even keel across the, the levels. Um, I've seen a couple memes where it's like, it's essentially the punchline of the DM is like some, it's like a kid begging and it says, uh, the rogue begging for, for, for advantage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but anyway, you throw your advantage. dagger from the tree line. It travels uh, in a great arc, but you, you, you hit your mark and it, sl- it sticks right into the neck of the orc. That's standing directly in front of Arlo, and that orc <coughs> stiffs up because you got it right in his spine. He falls over dead, pressing the <coughs> pressing the, the dagger directly into his skull. How, how far away? Arlo, Arlo not seeing, seeing this is, is wondering. How did I do that? Uh, what is that noise? Oh, it's the thing down. It's the heater. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll turn it off. She oh, could it's die. dying. It's dying. Oh, Our it heater's dying. Just turn it off. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Then I'm gonna. Run the 15 feet I have left back into the tree line <laughs> and use my bonus action to hide. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Um, Zoid burning away. 19. Yep, you are you are concealed. <laughs> back into the trees. What's up? I can see him. Why? Because of my well, my passive perception is 19. Okay, cool. So I, I guess I want to heal him is what I'm after. <laughs> okay, so. yeah. All right. Um. So now it is you humble out, and I'm like, oh god, you're bloody. <laughs> it do the, something about that. The goblin with the wolf's turn. He is going to run and try to attack your vulture, Josh. So let me know what the AC is on your vulture. If you sure. match it, wouldn't it be to me goes the tie? Um. Roll eleven. Sorry. Do what? Eleven for the eight. Oh, that's ten. Okay. I, I actually don't so know. he's going to attack know. with his I don't wolf know who bite. Consider the attacker in that. Um, which one was this attacking? What's your What's your? Because I'm the one actively trying to hide. So I feel yeah. like um, the one taking the, the action would be the one. It's who it's, it's, if, if it's a tie yeah, on like a, a yeah, contest, right um, nothing changes. Two D four plus two. Two D four plus two. Yeah, and it's plus four to hit. So I'd like to not be four. So six. Six damage. Yep. Okay. Um, six damage from the wolf bite, and then the goblin on his back is also going to take out his little short bow and fire it. Um, at the rip kind of I pointed at the tree. I'm gonna hide behind How much damage did you take? Six. <laughs> hey man. Yeah, six damage. You throw some healing this way. Just at that tree. <laughs> I'll be there, perhaps. All right. He's you. also going to hit the armor class of your vulture, and the vulture healing. is going to take another. Wait, is this the second one? Start this is gonna, the goblin wounds. is now firing his uh, bow. He's okay. on the back of the wolf. So this is the same vulture? Same vulture, okay. yep. And he is also going to take six, uh, another six damage. Okay. Gotta get that blood flowing. Are you cool? No. I'm just... I drink coffee. Okay, so the, the, the wolf, the goblin with the wolf on it, Ooh, no runs problem. over to the giant vulture. The, vul- the wolf takes a bite out of the vulture's leg. You said the goblin, the goblin with the wolf on it. <laughs> <laughs> Rise. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, and then the goblin's gonna take out his short bow, fires an arrow, and it passes through the vulture's wing. 
How's the vulture looking after that damage? He oh. is still hanging in still there. Still hanging in there. Okay. He um, is not happy. Gotcha. Um, and he will let you know about it. Okay. Cool. Um, that orc mage is dead because Black Fang killed him. Interesting that the one of the final ones standing is this greasy old gnome. Grim, it's your turn. I'm or a goblin. You're not the greasy. You're a gnome, and I'm not calling you greasy. <laughs> I was going to say, I, Arlo is not that well lubricated. Yeah. I'm going to reach down and, and just like pat Argonon on the chest, and okay. I'm going to cast Gentle Repose. Okay. Uh, you touch a corpse or other remains for the duration of 10 days. Uh, the target is protected from decay and can't become undead. The spell also effectively extends the time limit on raising the target from the dead since days spent under the influence of the spell don't count against the time limit of spells such as raise dead. Okay. So you're... so I no longer have to worry about reviving him in a minute time. So you, so you have pickled him. <laughs> so you put yeah you put your hand down and I'll, I'm, I picture it as like a green kind of, uh, you know, a film that appears on him. Kind of like a, sh- a shrink wrap kind of thing, but magically from your hand. <laughs> And it just kind of flows over him. And then his skin looks a little bit more rejuvenated. Um, his wounds uh, dry up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And he lay, he's laying there, you know, still sweetly dead. Um, Sweet. Can I can I see Jack? Because it's like a tie, I guess, so I don't know. Yeah, you see the tree that Jack went behind. Okay. You like. Also, I'm not really hiding from you, I guess. So, like, if well, you're... Here and there, there. I'm gonna be on this side of the tree, sure. not on this side of the tree. <laughs> Makes sense. <clears throat> we'll say you you see him and know enough where he is to be. Next effective. question. Yeah. Is he within sixty feet? He's not within sixty feet. Though. Jack, you're gonna die. All right. Then uh, I'm just gonna use my my bonus action to healing word myself. Yeah. Not a um, black thing as his way. He's ripping him up. <laughs> so I'm gonna cast it as a second level spell. So I'm gonna get back two d four. Okay. So you press your hand against your own self. No, this is oh, just spoken word. word yeah. Okay. What's I your you're word? in the middle of the road. No, he's not. No, I'm on the far side. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you're off. You're off screen here, and yeah. he's over here. So gotcha. I get back eight health. All right, good for you. <laughs> Impressive. What's your word for healing word? Good for you. Um, I don't. Um, restored was Res- it? Restored. <laughs> just, just turning around after the green film is is on uh, yeah. Argnon. Restored. Nice. That's not his voice. Cool. Get there. Um, and that's my last. One. It is now orc num- the, uh, another orc's turn. He's going to turn. He's going to try to chop at you, Arlo, because that's the only thing he can do. He sees that the battle is not won. There is an enemy behind him. There's an enemy to his left, and he knows a dagger just flew from his right. There's no way to escape, so he's going to try to have to go through this wolf to get to, Give it to escaping. Me. Uh, he rolled a 20. Not a natural 20 to hit you. Yeah, he's going to hit. Um, I mean, just barely. Oh, Josh. Yeah. He rolled a 15 damage. Nice. Like he he could not have been more accurate with this axe thing. Okay. Um. So he just buries his axe in your sh- front shoulder. Sweet. I'm good. You're only your sh- shoulders are only on the front. Your right shoulder. Yeah. It's kind of like doing? that back left leg. Yeah. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Cool. God, y'all are, y'all are beefy boys. <laughs> um. Well, are, he, are he gets there. I'm not from doing his, okay. His forms. <laughs> yeah. So we Jack learned, is bleeding out in the right, forest. Yeah. <laughs> We, I learned a new thing in the, a recent episode that um, that with the druid, he takes a form of an animal. Mm-hmm. You have to kill that animal, and then Arlo comes back full health. So it's and just then he like, can take another and then animal I can take that same form. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like that. Just another level up. Oh, that was too much, huh? Mm. That wasn't enough. <clears throat> that's funny to me. It's very cool. Bring it, okay. son! Uh, Bring it. So that's all that's going to happen. That's all he's going to do. Numero seven is going to turn back there. Grim, he's going to try to swing his axe at you after he missed last time. Um, will a 14 hit? No. Okay. So 14, he swings again, and you're just, you're, you just just got his phone number, man. Every, he telegraphs everything he's going to do, and you reach up, and you're able to block that, uh, block that axe. Uh, number nine is also going to move to you, Grim. He's, he's definitely not trying. They've only gotten Mighty one number kill. Nine. The, this <clears throat> whole crew has only pulled off one kill from when they started, and they're not going to let you take that away. They see you messing with that dead body. We at least want the one kill. Uh, so he's going to come gonna and attack you. I'm going to throw my arms up like this. Like okay. raised like their head height. Yeah. Is is for the for the listeners. Okay. My, my fists are head height. I'm just being rather arrogant at the moment. Okay. But also yeah. I'm having fun with it. Sure. Grim, Grim is having fun. I got with you. This. And he rolls a thirteen. Yeah, it's not gonna hit. Okay, yep. So he 
he swings again. So yeah, Grim is just feeling real good about himself. Uh, he sw- he blocks one axe, another one comes in. He's able to dodge it. He watches the axe fly by his face real quick and before the, the orc pulls it back. Um, um, I imagine that like I turn to sort of face like if town is directly behind. I'm not facing the direction we came from. I'm facing like to the right of that. So I uh, guess I'm facing toward the tree ant. I guess. Okay. So oh well, yeah. yeah. So just like I'm having fun dodging these people, but then I start to think, oh, there's a lot of orcs around me. Yeah. And Boulder might be coming my way. <laughs> <laughs> just, just okay. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking as I turn and raise I my fist. Feel some All right, yeah, I'm <laughs> Let's dance. I got you. Um, okay, that ends the orcs' turns. Arlo, it's your turn, sir. All right. Um, I'm gonna be vulturing for a minute because that's how I started. So, um, every damn vulture. The one of them that got attacked by the one dude who did the thing. The um, goblin. Yeah, he's on the wolf, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going for him. Depends okay. Who you for him. So, could be um, the other way around. Let's see. It was a. Plus four to hit. Nah, it's probably not going to do us. Eleven. Mm-mm. Okay. Wait. No, it won't hit him. Sorry. Are you attacking the goblin or the wolf? I'm going to attack the goblin. Yeah, not going to hit. No. Okay. All right. One more time. No, that's a crit fail. So he oh he whiffs on that one. So the yeah the the vulture pecks and talons at the goblin and just the goblins on the wolf kind of weaving. All right. The other one's over there, kind of still behind where Grim is at, right? Yeah, you're within striking distance of at least one orc. Give it to me. I'm okay. just going to strike out at the closest one. Sure. Uh, that's a 21 to hit. Yep, that'll hit. Right around with the beak. Roll damage with the beak. Uh, 12 to damage him. Okay. So you take a big old honk out of his chest with that beak hit. Sweet. But he's still hanging in there, I see. Yeah, he is. He just took uh, 23 to hit. Oh, yep. I gotta imagine this is probably gonna do it for him. Yeah. Let's see, the 2d6 plus the 2. We got a. That's a 6. And that's a 1. Yeah, he's so. dead. <laughs> uh, the, that vulture takes a giant hunk out of his chest, ripping flesh all the way down to bone. And the like. The vultures go for the heart, man. Oh, yeah. They, they, he sticks a talon in there and stabs him. They're rich, pulls juicy it out. courage. Um. Uh, and it'll taste a lot better after it's decayed a little bit for the vulture. But I mean, high kill count for the vultures. Bravo, vultures, Woo-hoo. for this round of combat. Um, um, I am going to, as as my attack, I'm going to use my movement speed just to get as close to Jack as I can. Because I, okay. when I saw him step out, I saw he wasn't doing good. Okay, so you sprint over there towards Jack. You don't quite make it to him, but you make it to the tree line. Okay. Um and. Oh boy, yep. This where <clears throat> these these boys is in a bad way. <laughs> I'm, I'm mostly trying to get out of Boulder range. Yeah. Um Black Fang, right? No, not yet. It is the two knolls turn. Oh yeah. So they one no- they don't have enough movement speed to get to the <clears throat> last one. One is going to come around uh, and get to Black Fang. Uh, and you hear him say, uh, Black Fang, we are here. We are here to help you. Uh, and then the other knoll is going to run over there to the orc that was attacking Grim, and he's going to try to attack. He has a spear. It is definitely going to hit with the spear. But he only does three damage. He only He's only able to slide that spear into the... Uh, what, what, the did, leg. what did he roll? Uh, it was a uh, 15 or something like that. Yes. 15 or higher. Uh, so he jams the uh, spear into the leg of the orc. Um, oh, I thought, he, I thought... No, he's not attacking you. My name. No, I was the orc yeah, asking you. Listening. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. I was no, like what's going on? He wasn't attacking you. I'm going to take um, that health back, man. <laughs> I'm not as dead as I thought I was. Swear. And the orc turns around and says, There, there are more of them. Oh, no, excuse me. There are more of them! Uh, because they had the Cockney British accent. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's the end of the Knoll's turn. The Treant is just going to move closer. He's not going to toss another boulder right now. Um, he's just going to... He and... Uh, he and Burb are going to get closer. And they will stand firmly between the this battle and the town. Um, 
and you can hear Bird like yelling to all of you, "Come on, friends!" Um, can yeah. Bird shoot an arrow down from? <laughs> he could. Uh, he's not going to here though. He's not confident in his arrow skills, and there are too many of you down there. Uh, Black Fang, it we is love Bird. your turn. He's so considerate. Um. Mm. Black Fang is not concerned with the vulture and the goblin situation over there. Um, well, he, the goblin, he's not afraid of that goblin. He's going to move back down here towards Arlo and Grimm. He's not going to do anything. He's kind of going to take this turn to rest a little bit. Arlo moved away. I mean, excuse, excuse, uh, Argnon and Grimm. Excuse me. Um, he moves over down there to Argnon and Grimm, and he uh, uh, kneels down to Argnon, and he says... This is what happens when you are too weak to do what must be done. <clears throat> Grim, well done in this battle. Um, I can say the same for you. Thank you. Yes. I have killed many. I have tasted the blood of many orcs. It was cool how you chopped that guy in half. I love chopping guys in half, Grim. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> I feel that we would get along well if this had been different. We certainly <clears throat> would. You put a hole in a man's chest with your bare hand. I'd like to learn that someday. Uh, Grim, it's your... No, it's not. Jack, it's your turn. Yes. <laughs> All right. Dagger throw. Another 15 feet out of the woods. <laughs> As you do that, you you are face-to-face with a wolf named Arlo. Oh. Hi, buddy. <gasps> when did you get here? <laughs> All right, I'm going to throw my last dagger. <laughs> I feel like you're not quite within 60 feet of the whoever's left. Are there any ranged attackers left? Uh, the, I mean, the orcs have javelins and the goblin has a bow, but there's only three enemies left. Okay. Uh, and you're over 60 feet from all of them. Gotcha. Then I'm, I guess I'm just going to pass. <laughs> well, you don't have to, I mean, is there anything you want to, I mean, if, I, stand right if I can, I can run my full distance out, then I can dash and then I can throw a dagger, but then I'll be in the middle of combat with four health and no bonus action to disengage. Well, you know it's Arlo right there, so I don't know if you want to speak to him or do anything with him, but... Can he heal me on my turn if I, like, give him my action? Not on your turn, but if you want him to heal you, you can tell him that. Mm, Nah. Okay. Um, I'll just remain in hiding. (laughs) Okay, so you're going to just kind of hang out back there. You you, you, kind of peek out and see that everybody's a little bit out of your range. You want to stay safe, so you hang out. you, You continue hanging out in the tree line. Arlo saw when you chucked that first knife, you weren't looking good. You, like, limped back, so that's why he ran that way, so. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to I'm gonna run out there. I'm going to run as far as I can. I'm going to dash. I'm going to be in the middle of that road, and then I'm going to throw a dagger. Okay. Probably going to whiff. Do it. Going to use my last luck point. <laughs> <laughs> That's a crit fail and oh. a three. <laughs> oh, no. Um, You're injured. It's hard wait, to hit. Did I have advantage on that? I lost the advantage whenever I ran out there, didn't I? Yeah, if you're no longer hiding. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess if you came out of hiding, you did lose advantage. Have you used three luck points since your last long rest? Yep. Oh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what I was saying. I, I was struggling. Okay, Um. so, yeah, Jack limps out. Not one to be... To remain in hiding, not one to leave the everyone to do it themselves. He limps out as fast as he can. Sounds like a truck. Yeah, he limps out as fast as he can, and he picks up a dagger to throw it, and he tries to aim for the goblin over there that's attacking the vulture because he the vulture saved his life, and he he hurls it, but the dagger just doesn't quite make it. Jack is just looking rough. Mama didn't raise no coward. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mama didn't raise no coward, and Jack. I was wondering, that was one thing, well, I was wondering why you would stay in there, because it seemed a little bit contrary to who Jack would be if he did not, you know, help out, so I appreciate yeah. you doing that. Um, I was thinking that same thing. I was like, Jack wouldn't do this. Um, Jack is not so concerned with staying alive. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the line you have to walk, right? It's if you play a character that doesn't care about dying, but also you like playing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh So, gosh, man, what time? We're, we're, let's, let's, we, 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 let's push, let's push it. We're going to do it. Um, Long episode. Away. The goblin with the wolf is going to say, "This is not worth dying over. I must return. I must return to Do- Donald." <laughs> and he he uh, backs away from the vulture and sprints away. Josh, would you like your 
Are vultures a capable? Yeah, they're sure they are. Yeah. Of opportunity attack. Absolutely. Choose, I guess, your beak or your talon. Uh, it's a multi attack, so let me see. But opportunity attack, I think, would just be one. Hmm. Uh, let Not me just see if I hit, cause it's the same thing to hit. Yeah. And it's a six. So, so he, you, the the goblin. After shooting uh, the vulture in the wing, he thinks, oh, this is my chance. He turns and goes to sprint away on the wolf, heading back towards Lonesome, where it, it would assume, we would assume they came from. Um, and the vulture trying to get towards him to take a nibble out of him just can't quite get him. And he barely gets a piece of the wolf's tail, and you hear a quick yelp as the wolf... They sprint off into the distance. It's like when Squidward ate that little piece of Krabby Patty. <laughs> the, the tiniest little bite. Looking like a horse. <laughs> There's um, so many SpongeBob references. It is. Okay, Grim, it is your turn, sir. How many orcs are near me? Uh, there's, there are two within melee range. Okay. How far away is the wolf goblin man? He is probably a solid 90 to 100 feet away from me. Alright, man, I'm gonna cast God and Bolt at that dude. <laughs> yep. I cast Death. That is a 23 to hit. That will hit him. He gonna die. Well, uh, I'm shooting at the wolf. Okay. <clears throat> Take out the tires. Um, flash of light streaks toward a creature of your choice within range, 120 feet. Make a range spell attack against the target. Uh, 46 radiant damage and the next attack roll made against the target before the end of my next turn has advantage thanks to the mystical dim light glittering on the target until then. Mystical. 4d6. 10. 10 damage. Uh, Josh, remind me the full hit points of a wolf. The, mm-hmm. I was playing fast and loose with these goblins a little bit too. Is that right? If there's somebody still alive by the time it makes uh, it back to my turn, let Am I close enough to the guy I killed to take my dagger back out of his body? Ooh. You are not close enough to either of your daggers right now in that turn. Um, you'd have to travel to get them. Uh, that's something that I assume happens at the end of a battle. You kind of pick up your weapons. Yeah. Um, but if you want to tell me about that, please do. Uh, so the guiding bolt does hit the wolf. The wolf definitely slows down for a moment. Um, and it, there's there's... The radiant damage has singed him pretty good. The goblin is still whipping him, trying to get him to go faster. Did I um, say first level spell slot? I mean <laughs> third. No, we can't do that. No. Um, so the, the wolf barely survives that attack as they sh- continue shooting off that way. Dang it. Uh, Bones? Bones' turn? But he is glowing. Bones! <laughs> I don't think we gave Bones' turn last time, by the way. Uh, I used my bonus action. I can I can command them as a bonus action. So okay. I can Boom. Them. Um, the range. Uh, what's his movement speed? Thirty feet. Uh, Good. feel that warmth. Yeah. Yeah. It's cold in here, y'all. It is. We can see our breath. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna have bones move like, cause I didn't have him move with me toward Argonon. He just kind of stayed in place because he doesn't move unless yeah. I command him. So I'm gonna have him like. Try to move around the people 30 feet. Well, I th- you told me that he came with you whenever I asked, I think, beginning earlier. Early. Whenever you passed he came through with the me war- too, Arnon? Yeah, I think okay, you told right. me he did come with um, you. Okay, the rules so then, on that, I don't care. I was fine with that. Um, then he is going to... He would technically have disadvantage, but since the glowing light, he's going to have... just It's going to be regular. Okay. Because the disadvantage is like 320 feet. Come on, man. Come on, man. Oh, no, he missed. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, he's got yeah, no, no, no yeah, a critical fail. Okay, oh, so bad, Bones, bad, bad Bones foolishly like waddles to the side to get around you, and like he puts an arrow on the string, but he doesn't like he can't hold it to the bow because he's not good at this, and it just shoots off to the left. Um, it's now these orcsies' turns. That stinks. Um, they're also going to retreat. Uh. <clears throat> they are going. The one orc is going to leave your. No, this one's going to. What's he going to do? <coughs> yeah, he's going to try to go around you and and sprint away. So he's kind of he's going to dash through you, um, which would give you an opportunity attack. Uh, twenty one. That'll hit. Come on. Okay. Um. 15 damage. Alright, so you, he goes to run through you, uh, like to run past you, and you notice that, and you just... I just kind of want to, 
As he's running past me, I want to like back slap his head. Okay, so you back slap his head with enough necrotic damage to kill him. <laughs> so the backhand of death from Pimp Grim is given to the orc. Grim. Um, the other, this you may call me. As you do the that, Grim. the other orc is going to sprint that way as well. I can't do that. Um, and he is going to sprint beyond. Do bones and try to follow the. Uh, um, does Bones get an opportunity attack? Mm. Um, if he's, I feel like he's part of you, so he's not like his own player, right? If you, if you can only command him on your bonus action. Uh, I mean, I guess I don't know. I, I feel like that's, that makes sense to me. That's fine. Because if he was his own player, he'd get his own action bonus action. So I don't know if Bones mm. gets reactions. I feel like he's more of a tool for you. I'll make that call on him. He does make it past. Um, no, uh, no reaction for Bones. Let us know if that's wrong. We'll, we'll look it up in the break. I mean, I feel um, like it's right. It's a low-level spell. Okay. So the orc it's shoots past, and he is, he is sprinting, <laughs> trying to catch up with the wolf as they're retreating. He said, but... Um, <clears throat> yeah, and you have to command him to do everything. So yeah. Arlo, would, your turn, sir. Yeah, I, I, I feel like if he was passing Bones, <clears throat> you could use your reaction to command Bones to do something, maybe. I can, I, I can have him yeah. set up to like oh, defend really? a certain spot, and I think that might apply to it. Sure. And then I wouldn't have to command him then. Gotcha. I didn't do that. So. Okay. Arlo, um, it's your turn. So. It sounds like a lot of people are in retreat. What are we looking at there here? Are two, there is a goblin <clears throat> wolf who is, from your position, probably you know, 120 feet away. Vulture-ish um, range. There's a vulture who's probably yeah. 60 feet away. Okay. Uh, and then there's an orc that just sprinted 60 feet past Grim. So okay. he's probably 60 feet behind the goblin. But there's only two enemies left, and they're retreating. Cool. Uh, I'll send a vulture after each of them. So uh, the closest one to the the wolf guy is yeah. he still on Wolfback? Or? He is still on Wolfback. Oh, wolf on a limping wolf. The, a, the wolf is glowing, though. He has advantage on yeah. that. Well, it's 22 to hit. Or wait, yeah. to beat. And 18, so 22 going to do it. So he flies oh, wait, in. No, he doesn't have advantage. It's only one attack. So oh, 2d, okay. 4 plus 2. So I don't have advantage? No. Well, the you first one is 22. So yeah. you fly, the go- vulture flies in with the beak. Um, and <laughs> takes a big old hunk out of that dog. Dog, Wolf or goblin? I'm going for the goblin. Okay. Uh, ten damage. Ten damage on the goblin. The goblin, you take a big old hunk out of his back, but he does survive. Cool. Um, that hit at least All right. with the beak. Uh, and then I'll try with the talons attack. That was a six to hit. Yeah, okay, so. so the beak keeps the the vulture's talons from being able to connect. That'll work. Um, but he's still right on the tail of the goblin. That'll work. So he's right up on him. Yeah. I'm just gonna have him like follow him like wherever he's going. Okay. He's just not gonna let up. So. Uh, and then the second one that has passed Grim um, yeah. is in retreat. I'm going for him. Uh, 20 tree to hit. Um, yeah, you're within range of that too, so yeah, that'll hit. And 11 with the talents. So. Um, just talents, no beak? The first one was the beak. second one was talents. So. 23. Oh, sorry. 23 and then what was talents? 11. Okay, 23 will hit. Okay. The talents one. So that's 2d4 plus 2, so that's 4. That's 2, so that's 6. So I got 8. Okay, this vulture also goes back and grabs the hunk of the orc's shoulder and rips it out, and the orc says, Ah, oh, just let me run! Let me run! <laughs> so we're, we're, I'm the same thing, he's just gonna keep on following him. Okay. He's gonna be all up on him. Alright, um, it's, you're still, I guess, you can still do stuff. Yep, I'm going to de wolfify and see if I can find Jack. Okay. Is so Jack you, still in hiding? No, I'm in the middle of the battlefield. Oh, yeah. Jack okay. ran past you moments ago, so you can find him. He's directly to your right. <laughs> hey, there's a Jack. Um, I'm going to uh, deep wolf and and find a Jack. Okay. And uh, I'm going to walk up to him and kind of like pat on his shoulder like, Hey, uh, I think we pretty much got this one here. Uh, I think the battle is uh, going in our favor. I'm going to cast the old Cure Wounds. It's a 1d8 plus to spell. Okay. So you get a whole 10 of them hilts. Hey, you mean? Farce, do you respond? Huh? Do you respond I to that? I think the battle's going yeah. well. I would say so, but thank you. Part of your lung regenerates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does take like a deep breath like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, did we come out here with the mayor? Uh, yeah, if we... 
Where'd he go? Yeah, we'll find him. He's around here somewhere. I'll tell you where he is in a minute. Much appreciated, Arlo. That was a close one. That's uh, not a problem. I saw you limping out there, so figured you could use a little little hand. And I'm a gnome. <laughs> so I have I'm the smallest hand <laughs> in the group. <laughs> uh, Arlo, that ends your turn. The the two gnolls, um, they're not interested in chasing down the orcs. Um, they're interested in making sure that Black Fang is all right, so they both move to Black Fang. And they say, Black Fang, are you well? Have you survived? Are you do, are, or do you need anything from us? And Black Fang says, yes, I've, I've killed many and I've tasted orc blood. We will have to kill more of these in the future. Uh, and the gnolls are... Oh, I feel like I messed... Their voices were a little bit higher pitched, right? The gnolls! Because they're like hyenas. Yeah, they're like hyenas. <laughs> His voice was a little bit deeper. But the gnolls were like this. Because he suffer, suffers from muscle hypertrophy. Right. <laughs> You've done well, Black Fang, as always. We love to see you do your work on the battlefields. I feel like that's even the worse right word. Word of voice. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, like, worse, like. Oh, on my throat? Yeah, it too. is. Yeah. Definitely is. Um, Black Fang says, Yes, thank you for coming to our aid. <clears throat> Though it seems we did not need you. And he looks around to Jack and Arlo and the vultures, and he looks to um, Grim and says, he Jack can... just collapses and face yeah. plants yeah. on the ground. <laughs> He just he gives y'all a nod of approval, like I'm enjoy like you've all done very well. Um, I am impressed. I nod at him as well. Um, <laughs> that's the end of Black Fang's or the Knoll's turn. The Treant is going to just kind of stand there and bend down to let Burb off. Um, and Burb, this will stop Burb. Uh, actually, he's going to hurl a rock at one of the at the um, the. The wolf and the uh, with Burb on it. <laughs> no, yeah, so, so he bend, he it's bends just like a down. Rocket disengaging, the... Burb flies off the stone, attacking the dog. <laughs> and the smashes into the wolf. Come on, yeah. friend! <laughs> <laughs> just the, the sword yeah. screaming yeah. all the way. <laughs> the tree bent, drops to a knee. Uh, he pulls Burb off of his back, and then he grabs a rock that's nearby, picks it up, and hurls it at the wolf. And the goblin. That same bloody rock that and, killed the orc yeah, and the mage. Uh, Got a little bit of mage goose still on it. It is definitely a hit. Four. Yeah, that rock is large enough that it crushes. Uh, what's the hit? What's the uh, armor class on a vulture? On a vulture? I can't. I can't really say that he throws a rock at a wolf with a vulture like right behind it and it doesn't hit the vulture. Well, he's flying. So uh, AC is ten. I'm going to say that, you know, trajectory-wise, it probably does collide with the vulture as well. Hopefully you're not too terribly attached. Um, but this rock crushes... Uh, the vulture's or, about to be attached to a wolf. Yeah. How much and damage rock. can a vulture take? Or how much... I mean, I think, let's see, he he does 18 damage with this rock. Yeah, he's down. Okay, so... So it's, instead of, like, dying, he just kind of, like... Fizzles. Evaporates and fades out. Because it's, it's like a phase spirit. God, I love that. So. I love that this rock hits a vulture and it just like into a, a mist yeah. as it passes through and then crushes a wolf and a goblin into paste because there's enough damage left over into a paste on the ground um and i feel uh, like the like the feathers on the vulture kind of explode out and then they like you see him like turn into leaves and just get blown away in the wind yeah, yeah. Very i like it i like it uh and so the rock hits the ground and bird looks up at the tree and says do or do <laughs> Uh, and then it is that's the end of his turn. Numbers yet? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, it's the end of the treant's turn. It he's is Black Fang's turn. Black Fang is just gonna he's gonna pass. He's not running down that orc. He's took a lot of damage, and he's he's cool to let that orc escape. Um, oh, to, but he won't. Because uh, actually, Black Fang does. He says, "We ought to let that one escape, so it can tell the stories of this bloodbath." And the gnolls both say, Yeah, we should let him escape so he can tell the stories of the bloodbath. <laughs> um, we want to let him escape. And then, uh, whose turn is it now? Uh, Jack's turn. Are we done? Uh, the combat's not quite over because there's still a vulture chasing an orc. <laughs> okay. But you can kind of freely move and do whatever you want. I'm going to go pick up my daggers. <laughs> okay. Jack goes and picks up his daggers. Uh, Grim, it's your turn. I'm a, when I get both of them, I'll sit down and I'm going to start cleaning them off. Okay, cool. That works. How far away is the orc? He's 60 feet from you. I mean, me and Bones are going <laughs> to walk up 30 feet. We're going to bone him. 
Let me do yeah. <laughs> this is a clean program. I'm um, just saying. I'm going to cast uh, <laughs> Toll the Dead, yep. which is a target you choose must succeed on a wisdom saving throw as the death bells toll around it. If the target is missing any hit points, it takes 1d12 necrotic. Otherwise, it takes 1d8. So, wisdom save, my man. Okay. Mm. They're not typically very wise. Uh, eight. He don't. Okay. So let me roll some roll some damage on this. Who are you attacking? The uh, orc. That is a mighty thirteen damage. Uh. Wait, wait. That is a mighty eighteen damage. Okay, then. Because I'm what? still and necrotic so shrouding. The you the orc sprints away, and you kind of walk. You run up thirty feet, and then cast your spell, and then you hear the bells, or is it just the orc? I was trying to remember because I asked that before yeah. who could hear it. I think I would like it to be me able to hear them as okay. well. So you hear, you start to hear the bells, but they're like in the distance. It's as if the bell, you hear bells ringing at his head. Mm. Uh, and the orc begins to hear the bells. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. And you can tell that with every ring, his, step, his, his steps falter. He begins to slow down. Can it like, as he's moving, the bells ring around him and his flesh starts to like peel off and float away <laughs> in little pieces works. and that's it's necrotic damage it rots like, flesh okay yeah I guess then yeah I guess sure yeah pieces of his like Wolverine in X-Men 3 when he yeah. was approaching Jean when, Grey right exactly <laughs> just not as intense whenever the bell every time the bell rings ding like a, a swath of skin is ripped off it's like and, the bells wave the, the yeah. necrotic over him and boom Boom. and like is he eventually like Jack Sparrow in the first scene of Pirates of the Caribbean like just just fizzles into nothingness and he dead. he's dead. I mean, he didn't have to completely fizzle, but well, he's that, fizzled. That's, that's cool to dead touch. He's fizzled. <laughs> this co- podcast is pro fizzle. He fizzles. <laughs> <laughs> if you're anti fizzle, stop listening. <laughs> We're pro fizzle here. Uh, so, at any rate, also, I like to say this podcast. I like when we call it our show. True. There are not many people listening, but it's still our show, <clears> we think. <throat> Um, so now combat is completely over. You've killed a whole orc raiding party. Party. Um, some people took some damage. Jack, you, you took you took a few hits. Everybody else seemed pretty uh, pretty safe. Um, Got some blood on my cuffs. Yeah. yeah. As the orc dies, um, you can Black Fang says, "Oh, Grim, we wanted him to tell the tales of this massacre, but I do love to see someone fizzle out of existence." I I could not let him escape. It was. I, I couldn't do it. I understand. If I had the energy, I would have run him down myself. <laughs> he was just looking for the easy out. <laughs> yeah, we'll let that one go. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's a reason, later. though. Yeah, yeah. I um, I, I reach my hand out to Black Fang's. Is he near me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you for your your help, Black Fang. He reaches out and grabs your hand, Spartan handshake style, and he says. Uh, it has been a pleasure, Grim. Thank you all, and you, thank for, thank you to you and your troop for, you know, believing us when no one else would. You're quite welcome, and thank <coughs> you for taking our side and not uh, throwing us to the wolves, as it were. Absolutely. And I, as I let go, I reach down and um, and touch Argonon's body and cast Revivify. Oh boy! Oh. Does that bring him bring him real uh, life? You touch a creature and that has died fresh. within the last minute. That creature returns to life with one hit point. Okay, so he goes. <coughs> when he stops all that nonsense, I say, "Walk it off." <laughs> and I also cast uh, cure wounds. We're out of combat, right? Yeah. I cast. Uh, I kill him. <laughs> cure wounds on him. He goes. He regains six hit points, so he's got seven total. <sighs> he like pats himself, and he like barely sits up, and he says, "What happened? We killed everything." Saved your life, literally. I brought you back from the dead. You're welcome. They, thank you. Hi. Oh wait, I didn't know Argonon was going to throw us away, did I? I, I only don't heard think you did. Yeah. I don't know if you did or not. I'm pretty sure you can get context clues because he was like, "No, we can't do that." You heard it. You heard. Yeah, I heard black things. It was pointing so. and gesturing. Sure. <laughs> Just those <Ugh>. guys <laughs> kill them. So you killed this a whole orc raiding party from the the Continental Army. <clears throat> yes. With this giant tree ant and burb and rocks oh my. and vultures from my friend Arlo. It was a team effort. Arlo's crossed field waving again. <laughs> this is Hello. amazing and it probably cannot mean anything good for our town. Well, you have new allies, the Knolls, as long as you don't screw it up this time. He looks up to Black Fang and he says, Black Fang, 
would you be willing to join us? You don't have to come live in town, but to join to join our town and in, in being against this this injustice that is happening to us. Our, our people are being taken. Would you be if if we can bro- broach this truce? Would you be willing to join us in protecting one another? Black Fang says, "I would." And the Noel said, "Say we would. We would do what Black Fang would do." I start clapping. Yay! Happy day. It is possibly a happy day for you all, but oh, we have some cleanup to do, and I'm certain they will send reinforcements eventually. I heard Argnon. You did? Because I stealthed over yeah, there before the did. battle started. Ooh, you did, so you're hearing all this. Can also, Arlo start making his way towards where Graham and yeah, Black Panther are? Okay. Y'all let me know what, that you, if you're doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the, you can hear from a few feet away the mayor going, <laughs> he's still tied up on the ground. <laughs> I take the uh, horn off my back and, and give it to uh, Argnon. <clears throat> And then I walk over to... No, not to Argon, to Black Fang. When you do that, Black Fang puts his hand out and he says, There are other horns. You keep that one. Oh, thank you. If Whenever you blow it, if we are close enough, we will come to your aid. Other side of the world. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> Sad. Dude. Mine's like way nicer. <laughs> Dang it. Can I have my, my vulture start on some cleanup duty? It is a giant vulture. Absolutely. If, yeah, if you okay. want to start eating stuff, the vulture, you know, bends down and begins to consume things. Hey, happy vulture. Argnon. Speaking to him. Yeah. Yes, Jack. <laughs> we may be able to work things out, but there's still a slight issue. What is it? Before the battle began, you tried to sell us out. You're right. I didn't want to, but I felt it was. It might have been my only choice. You, I've never seen a force that large coming on, you know, just four, five people. I assume that all was lost, and it was either give the three of you up or, you know, possibly lose my town to this this raiding party. I'm still demon ground. <laughs> oh, yeah, you are. That's true. I am going to drop that now. Okay, yeah, I didn't notice that. Uh, I, I was merely doing what I thought might be best for my town, and it's nothing personal. Orc raiding parties come to this town several times a year. None that large. I've never seen, and we've never had any mages in town. Never had goblins on wolfback either. It's usually just a, a wagon of orcs. If we do what we they ask, they don't hurt us, but I've never seen a, a force <clears throat> that large coming to do anything. I, I Didn't was, one come through the other day? Like two days ago? It was just a, the wagon with the three orcs that typically yes. come for the culling. Yes. We passed them on the way here. Absolutely. should have killed them too. That's anyway. what I was thinking. <laughs> but no one went with it. Uh... Arlo's just walking around in the background. He's like pointing out where all the little pieces are left. <laughs> pointing for the vulture. Yeah, yeah. the bushes the clipboard. scrap. You just yeah. throw it up in the air. Yeah, yeah. It's up to my friends if they want to leave you in power. Otherwise, I think you should be removed. And you would put the, the mayor back in my place? Who would you replace me with? I, I, I understand, your, I understand your, your trepidation. I understand that you're offended. But I was just trying to do what's best, and I, I truly do ask your forgiveness. We've already offered you Briar. Oh, yeah, Briar's here. Yeah, Briar's, yeah, Briar's walking up. We've already offered you Bri- Briar as a suggestion for a new mayor. Ah, oh, yes. Yep. Briar might could make a good mayor, especially with the garden. And- Why don't you and Black Fang team up to control... Not, nope, to enforce, nope, Fight those crime. are the wrong words, <laughs> to secure this mm. area. Yes, I... Sort of share the office of sheriff. <laughs> You're saying you want us to be shared. Yeah. <laughs> Finger guns abound. Uh, I love puns. Black Fank, would you be willing to come and possibly integrate your knolls into our town? I, I understand you you tend to like to live in the woods, and that's perfectly fine, but we will need help policing this town. You Use offered to help protect it, but would you take a formal position as co-sheriff of Fark? I know. <laughs> uh, Black Fang mulls it over. I, I just, I'm, I'm trying. I'm not gonna just look into the sky while I speak to myself. I gotta look at with some of y'all. Um, so Black Fang mulls it over, and he says, "I will. The army will surely be back to try to take whatever, to try to destroy this town, or at least teach you a lesson for killing some of their men." I'm gonna walk away and start looking at what remains of the bodies, trying okay. to find any loot. And I, as I'm walking away, I say, well, this is a victory for Grimm. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Um, but Black Fang says, yes, we will help you. Grim victory. <laughs> yeah. um, and then at this time, Briar comes up, and Argnon says to Briar, uh, Yeah, I want to walk not. towards this conversation. Briar, I see that you have returned, and you have. It, I can only imagine that you are responsible for this giant tree creature that has come to our aid. Why, yes, it was I that awoken the treant. I had told them I could not do it, but I was lying. Because it would have been bad news if I would have let the gnolls of only a few days ago have control of this tree. I was also afraid that I would not be able to convince it to do my bidding. But the treants, uh, in my dealings, do seem to be rather accommodating whenever the causes are good. Master Briar, what, what's uh, going to happen to your friend here now? My large treant friend? Larger. Yes. Uh, I have named him Trent. Uh, <laughs> his name is Trent. Uh, it is easy we'll to remember. Uh, but there, I have not summoned him. He is a, a beast, a creature that exists in the world. But it seems that he has pledged himself to this area. He does not intend to leave. I <coughs> imagine that... Is that a pun? Uh, he does yeah. not intend to leave. Um, I imagine uh, if... Uh, I need to have a conversation. I should have had a conversation before this one, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I believe he will stay here, and I hope that he will protect this town from any future assa- assailments, uh, uh, attacks from the Continental Army. This town has had enough. Uh, I believe the world has had enough of the High Council and their taking of innocent lives, and I hope that this creature will help protect the town. Well, with the, this group going missing, they might not send anybody else. But then again, they might. I think it's a good idea to keep them around. Yes, the army has vast numbers. I imagine they have no shortage of people they can send to do their dirty work. But maybe with a cloud of so many knolls, as well as uh, this large tree and they can hurl rocks at the speed of sound, <laughs> uh, they will be deterred from coming to spend any more time vacationing in Fark. Argnon speaks up. Mr. Briar, sir, uh, you seem to be of a cool head. Uh, you seem to be good at uh, leadership. You seem to be a successful druid. We have a beautiful garden in town as well. Our town is in need of firm leadership. Would you be willing to become our mayor? I'm sure the vote would go in your way. I know there are at least several people who are Briar fans in town. Would you be willing to become the mayor of Fark? Uh, Briar says... I will have to mull it over, but I believe that I will. Now, would you mind if this, if my new friend Trent, you know, hung around the town? We could even put him in the garden. He could live. He could root himself there, and he could only awaken when he's needed. I think that's a fine idea, right there, Mr. Briar. I, th- I think you'd do right by this town. I think so as well. So, shall we all go back to town and <clears throat> debrief? Do I find anything amongst the corpses? Um, I mean, their weapons, you'd find their weapons, but they weren't carrying any money or anything special. Dang. <clears throat> Were they carrying any corpses? Well, those no are, corpses. Those are eaten by the fey vulture. <laughs> if you want uh, any great axes, with gusto. Um, are there any bows? Scimitars. Take, there's a short bow. I'm going to take all of that. All that there's I two short, mores, short, short, short bows. Short bows. <laughs> short boys. I feel like it'd be hard to carry all that you find, but you can certainly take yeah, it if you want it. I got, I got 15 times 18 strength carrying. He's a big man. Way. Okay, a big load it up. Um, I'm just carrying it in the bundle, so if you see something you want, gotcha. I would like a short bow. Yep. So you pick take up one, one, of the go- one of the goblin <laughs> short bows. A short bow and two more of those daggers. If I have them, they're yours. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, Briar says one thing before we end this episode. He says, Now, Jack, before we left town in a mad dash to the woods to awaken the treant, there was a messenger that came from the north with a letter that was addressed to you, Jack Law, and it said from mother and father, and the address was in Lonesome. That, w- that, mother, or that letter is waiting uh, back in town whenever you all return. I see. Well, thank you. Jack, you have parents? I guess. <laughs> now, you know you know as, that your parents are dead. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, I who... I thought my mother was alive. Did we ever come to... I think we them? decided she... In the backstory, she died, then your dad died, 
So I think they're both dead. Okay. Um, what does the letter say? How will the new mayor of Fark handle his new position? Uh, did you have a good time? Will These Bryce and I ever get to pee? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing I, up because yeah, i got to pee I've got so a, I've got to pee. Really. Go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Dungeon Boys. We'll be back. It was extra long, but we had to finish that combat. Yeah. I had a wonderful time. I'm giddy I with do. joy. My voice is doing it. Whenever I talk about this show, my voice does that thing where it kind of quivers and with joy. That was um, a good battle. Awesome yes, birthday present. It was awesome. Fun. Yeah, and we're not done yet. So please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You can't do that on a podcast, but if you do it on the uh, video, you can do that. If you wish like me happy show, birthday in the comments, by the way. Yeah, if dope. you like this show, please leave us a review on iTunes. It's very helpful. If you like this show, I bet you would probably want other people to like it as well so you know share it with your friends um josh were you about to say something no okay good. share it with your friends and follow us on twitter at tank media games if you love this show uh you can support us on patreon at patreon.com slash tank media network uh and we will see you in the next episode we love you very much bye toodles